ideas. Hello, everybody, and I am Jason Brigger with you coming to you for History of Bad Ideas podcast episode 10. And I'm Jeff now, also coming to you with our 10th episode. That is unbelievable. Double digits. Double digits. Take a drink. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we're starting the drinking game early. <laughs> For everybody listening to this in your in your cubicles, keep drinking. <laughs> Makes the job a lot more fun, trust me. <laughs> uh, this week we got a special guest. Uh, we got Nick Carmesino back, the best color man in the business. He nearly wrecked episode three. <laughs> Technically, he almost destroyed our episode. We almost didn't even have an episode. <laughs> uh, but Nick is here with us. How you doing, Nick? Good. Thanks for having me. It's a beautiful day here at the studios. Thank you, Color Man. <laughs> Nick does impersonation from Major League. Uh, uh, Nick, I heard you have a couple things for us this week. Uh, you have a drinking game now? Yeah, well, listener uh, Jim said that he needed more awful because he didn't get drunk listening to that last episode. So I figured I'd, I'd just add to Jim's drinking a little bit. and Not that he needs it, but... We don't condone drinking at all, but... Oh, we certainly don't condemn it. We don't condemn it, <laughs> but some fans have taken to a drinking game with us every time we said the word awful. 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 Take, Take a, drink. a drink. And the best part is we drink every time we do that here, too. So it's kind of a fun game. Uh, but, Karma, go ahead, Nick. You gotta... So you can choose to participate in, in studio with this if you want. But every time we go with a spoiler alert, because that seems to be another fa- favorite mm-hmm. in the studio here, uh, a spoiler alert's going to get you two drinks. Okay. Oh, two drinks for a spoiler alert. Jeez, well, i got to write this down. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll, we'll go with a, uh, if the movie Clue is quoted, finish your drink. Oh. <laughs> okay, that's that's going to be Hold on, I'm writing this down. People. What was that first one? Two drinks for uh spoiler, spoiler alert. alert. Okay. We'll Good. stick with one for awful. Okay. And a clue quote gets you your drink finished. Okay. If anybody out there has other ones that you want to uh, send in, uh, you can put it on our Facebook page at Bad Ideas. Po- or I'm sorry, sorry. Facebook is Bad Ideas Podcast <laughs> on Facebook. <laughs> on Facebook. Uh tw- tweet us on Twitter at Bad Ideas Podcast. Or we are now on Tumblr Woo! at the History of Bad Ideas. So you can look us up there if you uh, really want to. Yes. And the other thing that we have is a, um, shoot, not Tumblr. Oh, we got an email. <laughs> yes, yes. We got it. We did get our own email for the. Jeff, uh, the technical <laughs> consult, uh, technical <laughs> genius yeah. over there. What do we got? What's the email? It's the History of Bad Ideas at gmail.com. So there you go. We got four different ways to get in touch with us. Bring, send in your own ideas for drinking games. Not that we condone it. Legally, we don't. So, you know. But if you do want to play along, you know, it's a fun game at home. And certainly don't drive afterwards. Correct. Or operate heavy machinery. That's never a good sign. <laughs> uh, we got a couple shout outs. Uh, first off, Stitcher. Uh, after uh, We appreciate everything they've been doing. They uh, gave us some uh, rankings a couple weeks ago. We were the number two mover. Uh, two weeks ago, and uh, they gave us a lot of promotion for that, so we appreciate it. So if you, uh, you download our show, you can go to Stitcher.com. Uh, they have an app for the iPhone, for the Android. Uh, actually, their Android app is a lot easier to get our show than most other places, and um, obviously we're on iTunes too, but Stitcher has been doing awesome for us, so thank you. Uh, like I said, we got lots and lots of friends of the show, uh, other podcasts, We'll get to, uh, everybody's going to take a week. We take turns every week. Uh, so if we don't get to your podcast this week as a shout out, we will get to it next week. I promise. Uh, this week, uh, first one is best of the worst podcast. And, uh, we actually just did a review for them, a guest review for, uh, Jonah Hex. And I think that's going to be up next week. I um, think so. Yeah. They just released, uh, double team, double team. Yes. The With Dennis uh, Rodman. Yes. Yes. And- <laughs> So, and Jean Claude Van Damme. Yes. Yeah. So, so yeah, you can go and listen to Double Team this week. Next week, they're going to be doing uh, Jonah Hex, and uh, they asked us to give us our thoughts. So you can listen to them at uh, Best of the Worst Movies podcast. So thanks, guys, for last year review of that. Uh, not so much thanks for last watch Jonah Hex. <laughs> and uh, this week also Graphic Novice. Uh, they did uh, My Little Pony. Uh, they do comic books. Um, the best part is I was talking to them this week. And I guess one of the guys on there uh, was ripping on My Little Pony, and they got a lot of fee- uh, reader or listener feedback on that. Not good. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the best part is the one guy lost a bet, so now 
in his pull list, he has to read My Little Pony for a year, the comic book. Wow. <laughs> so, so so they got some bronies listening yes, to them, huh? Yes. Um, the Green Up podcast, actually, guys, actually got me hooked on to the graphic novice, guys. Yeah. So it's a big, happy podcast world, everybody. <laughs> yes, it's, it's a nice, happy family amongst the podcasters. So, uh, But, yeah, so... Uh, graphic novice they do comic book reviews um they do talk a little bit hockey i'm just kidding guys uh, i heard your last episode that's why um but yeah so they they do great uh things with uh reviews every week of their comic books so and finally a tweet uh twitter shout out keep saying tweet uh to richie rosati rosetti uh r-o-s-a-t-i uh he is on twitter I think he has like 31,000 followers. He's a, he's a enter- in the entertainment world. He's okay. a host on MTV. He's done a lot of different things. Uh, follow him. Really funny guy. Uh, and he's actually positive, which you don't see in the world of internet a lot. Yeah. Um, or comedy. Or comedy. <laughs> um, but he is, um, he, like I say, he hosts a lot of different things. But uh, he actually spread the word this week and uh, gave us a shout out about our podcast. So uh, we'll take it anytime there's 31,000 listeners, uh, followers. Hey. Thanks, uh, Richie. I appreciate it. Yes, thank you very much. So there you go. And next, we'll go ahead and do the listener feedback. Yeah, I got some feedback. Uh, Ray was asking about uh, we did our uh, uh, worst, or uh, we were talking about worst sequels last week. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to know if there was any reason we didn't mention Superman 3 and 4. Ooh, that is a good one. Those uh, are good ones. Yeah, he, he said, uh, you know, he would put Superman 2 in his uh, top best. Uh, the Richard Donner cut? or <laughs> not, Well, even the, the regular cut. The regular he, cut. He said Superman 2 would be in his best, but 3 and 4 would be in his top worst. Huh. And I have to say, the only reason I didn't is because it didn't occur to me. Yeah, we're not big Superman fans here. Um, I think that's part of it. Yeah, we're but, just, but we those, don't think about it, but well, those e- are bad. Yeah, even... Yeah, well, those are an insult to Superman fans, so if you're not a Superman fan, they're still pretty bad movies. They are. Nick, you have you ever seen the Superman ones? No. No? The, the best I've got for that is the uh, Family Guy episode where they they spoof off of it, but that's about all. Oh, oh. You're not missing much on 3. You know what? Yeah. Go watch 3. It's great. It's really good. Richard and, Pryor's in it. Yes. Yeah, Richard Pryor. You love Richard Pryor. <laughs> and silence <Right. laughs> so um the we didn't get much well we i should say we did uh at the end of this episode the top five segment we got a huge amount of listener feedback uh on our facebook page on twitter everything so thank you uh but for questions um we didn't get many doug our number one fan uh he has a couple questions uh, there seems to be several villains in the new Spider-Man movie. What other superhero would you have him team? Would ha- uh, you have them team up with Spider-Man on to help him? Yeah. Well, if if you had the rights to certain characters, let's do a perfect world. Perfect world. Don't worry about film rights. Let's just. Well, if you're if you're trying to stay close and true to the book, uh, the two come to mind that uh, he seems to team up with frequently okay. would be Daredevil mm-hmm. or uh, the Punisher. Oh, I didn't even think about the Punisher. Yeah, Punisher got a start in uh, yes. Spider-Man. Yes, so. he did. And if I could find that issue for less than five hundred dollars, <laughs> I would buy it. <laughs> Let's be real. Less than two hundred dollars, I would probably buy it. <laughs> it's not. It's worth a lot more, but you know. <laughs> and your wife wouldn't let you do that, anyways. No, no, she did give me $200. authorization to go up to like two fifty. I think <laughs> that was before the second kid came along. Yeah. I don't <laughs> because. I, it comes down to either that or uh, Hulk 181 with the first appearance the first of Wolverine. Movies. And I don't even like the Hulk or Wolverine that much, <laughs> but I love the cover. I like how iconic it is. Um, so I, I have not been able to find it less than $300 or so. And and the budget's not that high. Correct. And, you know, eventually I'll get it, but when the kids are off in college and I've got a refrigerator magnet with the picture I do on too. It. Okay. In fact, your brother bought me one because I couldn't find one cheap enough of the comic book. <laughs> Would your wife let you buy a $300 comic book, Nick? Non issue. Okay. <laughs> Would your wife let you buy a 2.99 comic book? $2.99. I think if I came home with that, she'd start questioning things. <laughs> oh, she doesn't already. Come on. <laughs> 
Um, my my thought was uh, for a Spider-Man team up. Yeah. Uh, Human Torch, because okay. in the book he teams up with the Fantastic Four, <laughs> which I'm not a big fan of at all. But uh, I like the play of Spider-Man and Human Torch against each other. Uh, they do a pretty good job, you know, bantering back and forth. Um, that was the first one I thought. Um, I don't know. I mean, Punisher is a good one. I do like that. I love yeah. Daredevil. Uh, if Ben Affleck could play him, that would be awesome. Oh, that would be so much better. Yes, it would. <laughs> the uncut version's better. Director's cut. Anyways, um, but yeah, I think those are probably those are pretty good ones. I like it. Now, Punisher Ray Win. Who is it? Ray Winstone. Who did it? You mean the actor? Yes, the actor. Uh, no, uh, the it was Thomas Jane was in yes. the Punisher. Dolph Lundgren. Well, yeah, obviously Dolph <laughs> Lundgren, but uh, I will crush you. And it was Ray Stevenson. That's who it is. So which one of those three? Oh, I like the Thomas Jane uh, Punisher, so... I think there's about 12 people in this world like the Thomas Jane Punisher movie, and two of them are in this studio right now. Yes. You and I. Sorry, uh, Nick, I don't think you're a <laughs> fan. Um, but, but I will say, whether you like the movie or not, it does have a good soundtrack. Oh, there you go. And the one of the best lines ever. Oh. God, <laughs> God be with you. God's going to sit this one out. Oh my God! Awesome. Or even right you killed my son. Boom. Boom. Both of them. <laughs> <laughs> and it had John Travolta. No, that so. was actually a knock on the movie. <laughs> Travolta was not good in that. I like movie. when he kept playing with his hair. <laughs> was uh, Azim Kadisum in it? Uh, whoever the sang Frozen was that with John Travolta? Was she in it? <laughs> the singer. <laughs> Idina Menzel? Yes, yes, but whatever John Travolta said. Azim. Oh, that's right. Yeah. How do you not do that? Yeah. Here's blah, 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 blah. Here's Hakeem Olajuwon <laughs> with the next song. <laughs> oh, let it go. Yeah, if you don't know what we're talking about, Check Google out the... John Travolta at this year's Oscars. <laughs> um, the other question from Doug. It wouldn't be an episode without it. Oh, uh, yeah. But this is kind of funny. The uh, kind of news of the geek uh, prequel here. Doug asks, since they're making a gem and the holograms movie, live action, how is that going to compare to Josie and the Pussycats? <laughs> well, gem is truly outrageous. That's true. But yeah, you know, I've got a little space in my heart for Josie and her Pussycats, so I don't think gem could really, really match up. I don't think gem's going to have enough pussy in her movie. <laughs> Pussy cats. Oh, my bad, my bad. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. God. God, you guys are sick. Uh, and then I think that was, oh, we did have one. Uh, Ryan from Green Up did ask, to, uh, between Tom Hanks, Matt Damon, Adam Sandler, Harrison Ford, Kevin Smith, and Brad Pitt. Oh, and Justin Timberlake. <laughs> from that pool, recast the Avengers. Dear God in heaven, do I have to? Yeah, well, I'm looking at him like, well, one, none of them will be, uh, like, say, uh, Scarlet Witch, or Scarlet Witch. None of them will be uh, Black Widow. Oh, I didn't Scarlet think about Witch. Black Widow. Okay, but, get, get Black Widow in that. But, Ryan, you, I will have to say, that what, was my what? favorite question of the week. <laughs> Matt Damon can just pull his Bourne character and throw a wig on. That's true. That is true. He could be Scarlet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff looked a little lost there. Uh, well, I am lost because, n no. <laughs> I'll go first because I thought about this. Okay. I actually did. Uh, I have Matt Damon as Hawkeye. I can see that. See? I, I would agree with that. Uh, I have Harrison Ford as Nick Fury. Okay. You was, couldn't understand anything. Yeah. Well, I was trying to think Harrison Ford will just have to be, who's the old guy that hangs around? I was put, putting him as Jarvis the butler. Oh. I thought you were going to say Jar Jar for a second. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kevin Smith, I think he would be the Incredible Hulk. He's got to be. He's got the size. Nick, <laughs> back me up on that. He's got it. <laughs> <laughs> of course, he would be baked all the time, so he wouldn't ever change. Oh, that's true. I'm not mad. I'm not angry. <laughs> Different cream. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have Justin Timberlake as Tony Stark because he's has the co uh, comedy chops for it. Oh, I was putting Justin Timberlake as uh, Captain America. Well, you're wrong. Okay, <laughs> I'm wrong on that one. Or actually, you know what? I'll give you. I'll give Justin Timberlake as Tony Stark. Matt Damon would not be Hawkeye. He would be Captain America because he was originally up for it a while back. Yeah, but he obviously wasn't good enough, or he would have gotten it. And then I was going to do Brad Pitt as Hawkeye. No, I, I probably. Eh. I would do Brad Pitt as Stony Tark. Uh, Stony Tark. Stony Tark. <laughs> is, uh, Next up, Hakeem Olajuwon <laughs> with the singing. 
Uh, John Travolta's in the studios now, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Brad Pitt for Tony Stark, just because uh, in the Avengers, uh, you always saw uh, Robert all? Downey Jr. I said you oh, sorry. always. <laughs> <laughs> you always saw Robert Downey Jr. like eating something, and that's what Brad Pitt is known for. In every movie he's in, <laughs> that is true. he's always eating something. And in the Oceans movie, every scene he's eating something. Okay, so let's get, let's get an agreement here. Matt, okay. da- Matt Damon, he's going to be Hawkeye. Hawkeye, I can agree to that. Kevin Smith is Hulk. Yes. Harrison Ford is Nick Fury. Yep. <sighs> Brad Pitt is who? I think Brad Pitt should be uh, Iron Man. What do you think, Nick? Sounds good to me. I agree with Jeff. <laughs> Oh, you bastard. Oh, yeah, Brad Pitt's our Iron Man. <laughs> take a drink. Every time I mis- mispronounce a word, Iron you should take him a drink. That's a new rule. Uh, who's who's Justin Timberlake? I think he should be uh, Captain right? America. Oh, I forgot all about Captain America. Yeah. What about Tom Hanks? Um, Who's left? Thor. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that doesn't make sense at all. And Adam Sandler, he would be in a prison. <laughs> Adam Sandler would be whatever villain gets the crap kicked out of him in the opening scene. He's Toad. Even though he's not even in that world, he is Toad from X Men. <laughs> or Arm Fall Off Boy. I'm not sure. Is he in there? Uh, he's DC. He's DC. He's DC. So. He's DC. Sorry, my bad. But so. in a perfect world where we could cast anybody or any character, he'd be Arm Fall Off That's Boy. That's right. Maybe Head Fall Off Boy, too. <laughs> So, thank you, Ryan. That actually was my favorite question of the week. Uh, So, next up is the news of the geek. It's time for another installment of News of the Geek. Thank you. Uh, First uh, first news of the week is Kevin Feig. Feig. Weak or geek? Geek. You just said weak. (laughs) Oh, my God, Jesus. Okay. Well, I, I, I think I think it's pronounced, if I'm not mistaken, Figi. I think you say that every time. I well, mention. no, I, I just I didn't know oh. how to pronounce that. But they were on. If you watch the Marvel special from this past week, oh, okay. that was on instead of uh, uh, Shield. Yes. Uh, someone had said his name aloud. I went, "That's how you say it." it well, until he Feige comes in the studio. <laughs> yeah, come on in and correct us. Yes. Uh, he did. Uh, he was quoted uh, this week in. <laughs> this is the best source. Badass G- Digest <laughs> did an interview. Um, he. This is quote him. Uh, I think television is filling some of that now in terms of bringing out more product. That's certainly the idea with the Netflix shows. Uh, I don't know that we will nece- necessarily say, okay, we're now moving strategically to a three movies a year. Now we're moving to four movies a year. Um, what is more likely is the next group of movies uh, will work. People will want to see additional stories. Uh, we'll have too many franchises, and you can't do one of each franchise every two to three years. We have to move to three a year, but that would have to be a natural move if it were to occur. Um, and then he said, basically, they could even do four movies a year uh, on it. Uh, this is from Badass Digest, and this is, I'm going to quote them, so thank you for this. He, uh, he did a rundown of basically the movies coming out uh, that he knows, or that rumored, you know, pretty much is concrete. Guardians of the Galaxy in August, Avengers Age of Ultron in May 2015, followed by Ant-Man in July 2015. Uh, then in 2016, Captain America 3 is coming out. That's been pretty much confirmed uh, in May of that year. Uh, it's actually going up against Batman versus Superman. Ooh. Well, As they, of now, somebody's uh, going to flinch. Yeah, you know, they, 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 want a, they want a clash, huh? Marvel does. <laughs> uh, and then a mystery film in July of 2016. Badass Digest speculates it's Doctor Strange. I hope it's not. Uh, any thoughts, do you think? I... I have actually no problem with Doctor Strange if it's done right. You think? Mm. And I mean, well, then again, I don't know if you saw that the uh, the pilot for the they tried to do a Doctor Strange show in the, I think it was the seventies. Yeah, you can I know you can find that online on YouTube or something. That was uh, not good. But but it had elements. It had, it had elements, okay. and I think if with the right elements, even Doctor Strange could be. Uh, they have a hard right. on to get Doctor Strange in there. Well, he's the one major character they haven't developed on film yet you think well he does connect the science and the ma- magic nick do you know anything about dr strange nothing okay he wears a nice mustache he has a nice mustache oh yeah well, he was big in the 70s pencil thin or oh, it's, pen- it's well not no not anymore it's a little bit puffier it's a little bigger than pencil thin but not like a walrus mustache correct 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 
Um, but and then he wears a lot of chest hair out. He has a lot of chest pelt. hair. He's got a pelt. He's got a pelt. Yep, yep. Uh, so that's about it. He was a surgeon, and then what happened? Something happened to his hands. Yeah, his hands. He couldn't operate anymore, yeah. and uh, he became the sorcerer of the galaxy. The sorcerer supreme. There you go. So he was able. He was the best wielder of magic in the Marvel okay. universe. So Nick, hold on. You you want magic? No, not Magic the Gathering. No, no. no Harry J- Potter magic. No, Jason. No, no, not Harry Potter magic. <laughs> Jason doesn't want magic. Uh, <laughs> Doctor Strange. He's kind of always been an anti-strange person. Um. So Nick, as an outsider, <laughs> what do you hold on? Jason has always loved strange. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I was waiting for someone to. I, I just was going to let that go. <laughs> of course, you were going to let it go. Contractually, I cannot <laughs> let it go. <laughs> well, we're learning the explicit rating this week. <laughs> we're going to earn it. Uh, but as an out, Nick, you're not a full fledged geek, even though you like Harry Potter. Harry Potter and Lord of the. <laughs> Ring, so technically you are a closet geek. Uh, do you, are you intrigued by that at all? I mean, you like Avengers, right? Yeah. It, no. And personally, I would thinking about some of the stuff, looking at this stuff for this week's those types of movies. Personally, I'd like to see something going back to instead of a movie like that of where they're just stretching for anything comic book or mm-hmm. anything in in that genre. Mm-hmm. This generation, we need a new generation of Mel Brooks. Where, who's the next Mel Brooks? And it's not the Hangover movies. It's, so you want to go straight from the comic books to, like, comedy? Well, a good mix of both. Okay. I think you're going to get that with Guardians of the Galaxy. That's I, Yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy is aiming to be something like that. Have you Bring seen the previews some... for that? The trailer for it? No. You need to see the trailer. Because Chris Pratt's in it, and that just makes it great. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but that alone makes it great. If you go to our Facebook page, <laughs> there is definitely a link still uh, yes. on the Facebook page. Uh, but I think that I get what you're saying. I think you're going to see that with Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, I think they're eventually building for Guardians of the Galaxy and Avengers crossover. Uh, I think that's it's inevitable. Um, so Doctor Strange, I don't think is going to translate well. I'm not. I don't care about it, but. We'll see what happens. Uh, the other thing that Badass Die just said is uh, the studio is very keen. This is just rumors now. Ru- uh, studio is very keen on getting a Ms. Marvel movie off the ground. Eh. And they mentioned that the next Guardians of the Galaxy movie could be a Planet Hulk. Okay. So, so that's uh, the storyline where Hulk gets sent away to a uh, foreign planet because he's too unstable for earth and basically he takes over that planet <laughs> he becomes so, the ruler of uh, of the, that the, planet is it was it a prison planet i or? think i'm not sure oh. i'm not sure or they I just think, marooned him there i have the series the miniseries i've read it and it's good but i don't remember if it was a prison planet or if it was a peaceful okay. planet i'm not sure okay. um wasn't dr strange uh, one of the head uh, main guys on sending the hulk away yes okay. yes um so maybe that's kind of a tie-in well, if you you saw the uh, uh, Marvel special this week, right, on S.H.I.E.L.D.? Yeah. I did see it. I did go back and see it. Um, the interesting thing is Avengers 2, they had uh, some outlines and all that, you know, drawings of it. Uh, Hulkbuster versus the Hulk. Yeah, the Hulkbuster armor. My question is, okay, say you do a Planet Hulk, does he go nuts in Avengers 2 because Tony Stark's throwing Hulkbuster at him? Or... Is it Age of Ult- is it Ultron that's throwing the Hawkbuster at him? I, I would go under the assumption that Ultron is somehow taking control of of, the, of, of the machines. Okay, so I could be wrong, and maybe uh, Hulk has to fight uh, uh, Iron Man. That was my only thought was when Planet Hawk. So, um, so there you go. So thank you, Badass Digest. Thank uh, you, Badass Digest. A little insight there. My question on that is: if they go with a Miss Marvel, yes. are they going after the younger girls? To draw them in, or are they going after a sexy Miss Marvel to... That's a good question, because there's two Miss Marvels. Yeah. The new one that they just released in the comic books, which we talked about a couple weeks ago, um, she's uh, Arab-American, and she's younger. I think she's 19, 20 or so. Okay. It's gotten decent reviews. I think if they go with that... They're obviously going for the younger girls. Yeah. If they'd go with Carl, D- Carol. Uh, Carol Danvers, yeah, not Carl, Carol, Carol, sorry, <laughs> Carol Danvers. Um, yeah. I think you're going for the 
fanboys. Oh, she has boobs. <laughs> Let me touch them. I would think, A, they would be probably trying to uh, help boost their new uh, material mm -hmm. and go with that. And B, I'm not sure Carol Danvers could carry a movie by herself. Correct. Good team player, but not somebody who really, you know, gets a following. And it's not even a woman herself. or a man thing. I just think the character is weak. Yeah. I mean, I'm all for a Wonder Woman movie. Put that on. And you know what? After well, Marvel can't do a Wonder Woman movie, though. That's true. But you know what they can do? Lady Sif. After watching Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. a couple weeks ago, yeah. throw me a Lady Sif miniseries. Throw me a TV show. I, I would be all for it. Yeah, hell, ever show up on Netflix. I'm for that. There you go. Uh, next thing is, Nick, you're a Star Wars fan. Yep. Here you go. Right down your alley. Star Wars, the new one by J.J. Abrams, is being set 30 years after the first one. Uh, it begins shooting in May 2014. That came across the internet. Well, actually, it's 30 years after the end of Sorry. Jedi. Sorry. So, pretty much, the actors are 30 years older, so it would make sense mm -hmm. to have the things take place 30 years past. Are you interested, Nick? Uh, somewhat. I'm... The storyline would need to develop a little bit more before I'm really interested. It's just you throw a, a 60. I looked up just ages on these the original actors just to see where they're at. A 62 year old Mark Hamill that has more chins than a Chinese phone book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boo. boo. Oh, that was awful. <laughs> Thank awful. You, Yay! <laughs> Thank you for that silence of drinking. <laughs> yeah. Okay, next. <laughs> so then you've got Carrie Fisher at 57, who... She's only 57? You, yeah. Wow. Yeah. She, wait, they're exactly. twins. Shouldn't they be the same no, age? No, 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 no. I think that's just in the movie. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. Exactly. She's only 57. <laughs> if you've you seen a picture of her. You looking at her. Yeah. No offense to her. If she wants to come oh, on, let she, her she, she She's lived a full life. Like it. She's <laughs> no longer Leia on any level. There's, there's no level... No princess there. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Grandma Leia. <laughs> there you That's go. what it's going to be. And then Harrison Ford, I mean, he's 71 now. Oh, dear. I mean, <laughs> oh, we got Harrison Ford in the studio. Hey! Harrison, what do you think about your new movie? Poop, poop, poop my pants. <laughs> you pooped your pants, Harrison? <laughs> clean me up. You should get that. Clarissa Flockhart could probably clean you up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I just want to see Harrison Ford in it because I love seeing him do the promos for it when he goes to the talk shows. <laughs> yeah. Tell us the story, Harrison. I don't really do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, it's like Harrison's so happy to be talking about everything. Then he goes, what about Star Wars? Oh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, you're cashing that check. Freaking talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm excited about it because it's Star Wars. It's got to be better than the prequels. Um, it would take a lot to be worse. I, my hope is that Mark Hamill plays J Luke as, you know, the Jedi Master. He's running an academy. He pops up for like six or seven scenes, have a good day. I don't need him fighting. I don't need him <laughs> doing anything like that. Yeah, if those three are in the movie, they cannot be the main focus no. of the movie at all. It's, no. It's in and out. It. And I did say, well, I did tell you before, though, that supposedly the rumor is that as soon as Mark Hamill and uh, Carrie Fisher signed on, official, they haven't officially signed on, but, you know, they have, let's be honest, uh, that Disney sent a trainer to their house, a fitness trainer, uh -huh. to get them in shape right away. So, hey, oh. you know, good for them, I mean. Hey, hey someone's paying for your training? Yeah. Somebody can it. pay for my training. Yeah, please. C come on over. Come to the studio. <laughs> Train us for free, you know, or yeah. I'm looking at you. Over. I'm looking at you, DDP Yoga. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next, uh, so we'll have more Star Wars once it gets closer, but there just isn't much out there. Thank yeah. you, JJ Abrams. Um, Walking Dead. I know not many other people watch it here. Jeff, you're what four seasons behind? I'm four seasons. Okay, behind. good call, <laughs> Nick. How many? Same boat. Okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, spoiler alert, take a drink, everybody. Uh, two, two. <laughs> two. <laughs> uh, I will say. Uh, this week's episode, The Grove, titled The Grove, you know, this ep this season has been hit or miss. This week's episode, my God, was rough. Um, the psycho 11-year-old girl had, uh, she killed her sister uh, just because she thought she would come back as a zombie, and that's the psycho sister's only friends is the zombies. 
So that was kind of shocking because up until that point, it was like halfway, half hour into it. I was like, okay, it's going to be typical boring. It's been kind of slow burn. Well, then Carol, who's the badass of the group, who in season one, I cared nothing about her. Now I love her. Uh, she basically made the decision as an adult that, well, I'm going to have to kill this 11 year old now. And she did. <laughs> point blank. Well, not point blank, but yeah. pretty close. <laughs> Tell, told her, look at the flowers and bam. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I, I saw you say, look at the flowers on Twitter yes. or something. I'm like, I wonder what you, that's. Oh means. my goodness. And I don't get shocked by a lot of stuff. I, the whole time I'm on the couch watching this and my wife is not a big fan of the show, but she looks up every time, time. And I out loud, I'm saying, you have to fucking kill her. You have to kill the psycho. She's killing everybody. You have to kill her. I don't care how old she is. Then they killed her. I was like, you can't fucking kill her. (laughs) How did you kill her? (laughs) Oh my God. Uh, That actually sat with me almost as long as Opie's death on Sons of Anarchy. Opie, moment of silence. So, uh, Walking Dead, um... Carol, the uh, actress that played Carol, I can't think of her name now. Shout out to her because she did a hell of a job this week. But uh, good job, Walking Dead, to make it different. So uh, that was my just quick thing on News of the Geek. And then uh, let's see here. Uh, Suicide Squad was on Arrow. Did you see that, Jeff? I, did, I didn't see it yet. I'm uh, uh, yeah, still a week behind. Episode. I'm a week behind. Well, a week behind. Just two days behind. Okay. But. Okay. <laughs> uh, I won't talk much about, it, but I will say that after seeing them, I want a show. I want a Suicide Squad show. Oh. That's uh, you know, Diggle was awesome in it. Um, you know, his wife's in it. Um, Deadshot and Harley Quinn. It was Harley Quinn. She's it, they show her the back of her in the prison, and she goes. She's and this is not an exact quote, but it was something like, "You guys need some help, some uh, major help. I'm a psychiatrist or a psychiatrist, you know." Yeah. <laughs> and then they bang on her door and tell her shut up. <laughs> and oh, it, and so she does. She doesn't actually on Suicide Squad. She's not on Suicide Squad. She she's in the prison. Uh, but the best part is the voice of her from like the cartoons and that did the voice of her in the show. Oh, really? From, from and the su- Batman anime? I think series? it was from Batman anime. I'm not hundred percent sure, but whoever's been doing the voice recently on the video games, uh, the oh, Arkham okay. so- did her. And I'm like, Oh my God, that is so Harley. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, who knows if anything will come of it, but Oh my God, I was happy as anything. So, Oh, and I just wanted to let you know, I looked it up. Uh, Carol is played by Melissa McBride. That's who it is. I knew it was McBride, but I couldn't think of the first name. I kept thinking of the country singer. Yes. Martina? Martina. Yeah, it's not Martina. <laughs> so, good job, Must Melissa. Must be her sister. Yes. So, and late breaking news. Well, as of today, uh, I think it might came out last night. So, not too late, but, you know, we're taking it. Uh, probably Michael Bendis' and Michael Avon uh, Omings uh, comic book series Powers is finally headed to TV. This is according to Deadline.com. It's an hour-long drama based on the comic book. Uh, Will actually be coming to the PlayStation Network, uh, Sony's first original series. Oh, wow. Uh, It's actually going to be... It's Netflix. It's going to be kind of like Netflix um, in terms of that Sony is basically trying to get as many original shows on their PlayStation Network, obviously PlayStation 4 or 3, all that stuff. Hey, why not? That's what I said. Did, um, didn't they already try this series and fail once? Powers is based on the murders of superheroes. So they have tried it. It has never been on TV. Uh, it's been in development since 2011, and FX actually had it for a while. And oh. then it, they never... They casted it. I think they did a pilot, and it never happened. Which one are you thinking, Nick? That's the, the FX. Oh, okay. I, they did mention it. I don't think it's ever seen light of day. Um, but they did talk about it a lot, so it wouldn't surprise me if FX did actually try to promote it and never came out. Um, but it's been through the ringer, so I've never read Powers. I've heard good things about it. Um, I'm I'm intrigued that it's on PlayStation. It's on Sony. Uh, I think it's in re- uh, retaliation for uh, Microsoft doing Halo TV series on their Xbox. So, uh, Nick, I know you have place you have Xbox 360. Which one are you getting next? Xbox One or PlayStation Four? Uh, I'm going to default to neither because it's just not going to happen. Oh, you're killing me here. Come on. <laughs> I, I wish it could happen. It's just I cut my Xbox Live almost a year ago. And and your life hasn't lost any quality to exactly. it. But it hasn't gained any either. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it probably has. Uh, I'm a PlayStation 4 guy. Uh, I love the Xbox 360. I had no issue with it. I'm excited because... Hey, you know, I'll take I'll take a uh, watch at this. So, 
um, like I said, if you get the if you get the PlayStation Network, uh, which is like talked about before, is like fifty bucks a year. You get free games, and now you get free TV shows. I'll take it. So I'm intrigued by it. Any thoughts on that, Jeff? None. Okay, good call. <laughs> <laughs> I would say though, if they developed if fifty dollars a year developed, they could really hurt Netflix with that. Yes, at fifty dollars a year, if they really developed into a competitor of Netflix, because Netflix is what nine dollars a month. I think it might have went up to nine. I know it was eight, but it might have went up to nine. I think they're like, raising it again. And I think too. they are talking about raising it again. Yeah, which again is not bad. I mean, ten bucks, no. say even twelve bucks, is not bad. No. And I've but, even thought about getting rid of cable and getting the Roku system yeah. uh, put into my TV, and for ninety nine dollars, and then you can still get ESPN. You know, you have to pay separately for some of it. It's kind of more of an a la carte. I, I'd rather do that on cable anyway. Correct. You know, pick the networks I want and not worry about the ones I will never watch. My problem is I wouldn't get the NFL Network. That's you, the only you one they don't have. You don't oh, need okay. history, too. <laughs> um, I'm having a hard time finding history on the History Channel. Pawn Stars? Isn't that history? <laughs> that doesn't look staged. <laughs> what about Hardcore Pawn? Oh, wait, that's on True TV. That's, uh, yeah. <laughs> True TV only comes out to once a year. Right now for the March Madness. For March Madness. <laughs> People watch True TV in March. Yes. <laughs> uh, it could work. It could damage it. And let's be honest. I mean, cable as its system is set up is not going to last for long. I mean, it may be 10 more years, but it's got to go a la carte. I mean, nobody watches it. A live yeah. t- when was the last yeah. time you watched anything live? It's all on DVR. Yeah, yeah, Just, pretty much. Especially even, even the shows I watch on the same night. Like last night, I watched Parks and Rec, but I waited until 9, nine o'clock, <laughs> and I fast-forwarded through all the commercials. Yes, yes. And... Well, I got seven episodes of Castle still on my DVR. Oh. <laughs> we're, we're, we're behind. We're slowly we're behind. getting You're through that. Well, well, I can't complain. I'm still four years behind on yes. uh, Walking Dead. So. <laughs> I think I'm seven episodes behind on Duck Dynasty. Does that count? For oh, get out. Get out of the studio. Get out. <laughs> Duck Dynasty. <laughs> What's the most embarrass- embarrassing thing on your DVR? Not for you, but for that people would be a guilty wow. pleasure on there. Um... Real Sex 1700? No, uh, I'm trying to think. I've, I've got like a half a year's worth of Jeopardy on my DVR. Okay, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> That's it? <laughs> well, and then I've got the shows I watch week to week, but then I erase them. Community, that would be them. embarrassing. Com- community's not embarrassing. Oh, sorry, sorry. I wore that with pride. Oh, yeah, you should. Yeah, great. Oh, wait, Nick likes it too. My bad. <laughs> Outnumbered here. Wherever you are, you're in the minority, Jay. <laughs> Uh, I actually don't think I have anything embarrassing on my DVR lately. Um, nah, I don't think so. I got Sherlock, which I'm not embarrassed by. That's well, you a great should show. be embarrassed by that. That's an excellent um, show. Yeah, there's not much on there that I'm embarrassed by. But I mean, yeah, like I said, uh, I had the world's strongest man, but I'm not embarrassed by that. <laughs> Most people should be embarrassed by no, that. They should. I love Magnus Magnus. Is Magnus for Magnus. Whatever. Whatever. Is that because he's from for Magnuson or? He, he, it's because he's the best at lifting the Husafeld stuff. Ooh. <laughs> Who does the caber toss? Who does the caber toss? That's the Highland game. Oh my bad, my bad. <laughs> it's the saber. Oh. <laughs> uh, and finally, in news of the geek, um, according to BoxOffice.com, uh, Fox Studios has scheduled a, another Wolverine film, a solo one, coming out on March third, two thousand seventeen. Happy birthday to me. Um, <laughs> This will be James Mangold's follow-up to the Wolverine film that was just out. Uh, Hugh Jackman is attached to it. Wow, okay. Uh, they said it's probably his last one. Yeah, well, they said that about everything they've done Correct. since the last Wolverine. Like, then they backed up a whole dump truck yeah. of money and <laughs> yeah, said, here, do it again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, his comment, James Wol- uh, uh, Mangold, his tweet was, I'm shooting the next Wolverine after X-Men Apocalypse, which is coming out in May 2016. Okay. Uh, Hugh Jackman is expected to reprise his role. Uh, the other thing, interesting thing is, um, from de- boxoffice.com, is Joshua Trank, who's the director, his Fantastic Four uh, is actually coming out June 19th, 2015. So then they already are planning a sequel for Fantastic Four for, oh, wow. for 2017 in July. So you have basically 2015's Fantastic Four, next Wolverine's 2016, next, fan- uh, next Fantastic Four is 2017. So Fox just wants to jump in on the uh, Disney bandwagon since Disney's got the other Correct. Marvel thing. And they they're don't like, want to lose them. Yeah, and they, yeah, they got to produce them or else they'll lose them. So. And here's the interesting part. They announced an untitled Fox slash Marvel film 
in July 2018. Nothing like, you know. <laughs> yeah, nothing like pre-planning a little Here's bit. Here's an idea. Make Fantastic Four good the first time, and then we can all <laughs> talk about the rest. But uh, they actually, boxoffice.com actually speculated uh, that it could be maybe D- Deadpool, which fanboys, it's never going to happen. Just let it go. I don't think it will. Um, uh, they're, they're crazy to not make a Deadpool film. I agree with you. They're I just, just don't think it's going to happen. They're crazy not to make a Deadpool film. And at this they want to make money, they make a Deadpool film. The problem is you're not going to have Ryan Reynolds back anymore. By the t- If it doesn't come out until 2018... Yeah, well, the, I mean, Ryan Reynolds was perfectly cast he was. until they did whatever they did to him at the end of that movie. Let's not talk about that. But uh, <laughs> they'll find someone else to play him. That's fine. But, I mean, Deadpool's the hot property, and by 2018, he probably won't be. Correct. Here's a here's a, what they speculated on, a crossover film between X Men and Fantastic Four, 2018. Yeah, they've done it in the comics. They can do it in the. I'm movies. okay with that. Um, I'm not a fan of Fantastic Four at all. Uh, I think it's, I, I think for the time it was impressive. You know, first team book, blah blah blah. You know, you get all that. Um, I get that it was a family friendly one. You know, for the time, I, I, I just don't think it holds up anymore. I think it's a pretty boring, uh, ser- uh, 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 sorry, pretty boring characters. Yeah, um, and then they have to keep killing people off and then bringing them back. Yeah, yeah. Johnny Storm died for what six issues? Yeah, they're oh, he's going to be dead. He's going to be dead forever. He didn't even last a year. Yeah. So, how much overload would that be with Fantastic Four and X Men? And on, you also on got superhero. I mean, just that's just complete superhero overload. Well, then, you also don't... Not only do you have Fantastic Four, you have X-Men. You also have yeah. Marvel's studio that's producing everything under the sun. Yeah, yeah, They're that, going three that stuff to four. was just the Fox stuff, so then you got all the Marvel stuff. And then you, you got, got Sony DC stuff. Oh, Sony with Spider-Man. Yes. And... Uh, did, did DC. They, <laughs> yeah, I'm just talking in the one movie, where oh, they're okay. going to mix Fantastic oh. Four and X-Men together. I mean, how many superheroes do you need in one movie? <laughs> the thing is, though, if you look at it, Marvel's going to have Avengers and Guardians of the Galaxy. It's going yeah. to happen. So then you got that. Then you got Fantastic Four and X-Men. You even have it a little bit in the new X-Men movie, too. Um, yeah, the old, the uh, first class and the original. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, the I mean, there's going to be so many different and people playing the same character, just an old version, a young version. People playing different people from different... I mean, there's going to be so many characters in the new uh, X-Men. And you can uh, do it well. You can do it well. The problem is, who do you focus on? Because they're saying now Rogue is pretty much out of X-Men Days of Future Past. She's not even in it. Which is fine. She she took the cure in the last movie, so... But they said Storm, her roles have been... Her her role has been cut. Which is fine, because... Cut completely? No, no, down a lot. Yeah, well, they just want a cameo from Halle Berry, is I think all the... The problem is, though, then it's going to be a Wolverine movie, basically, is what it's going to come down to. It's a Wolverine, and then... Xavier and Magneto. Yes. I mean, it's it's those three, is who it is, and everybody else is supporting. I... The problem is, I, I think you're right, Nick. I mean, fanta- you got Fantastic Four, you got X Men. You know, the only thing that helps is if you build up, you know, in previous stories, you know, in previous movies, you know, their backstories. So at least you don't have to worry about that. But yeah, I mean, that's, you know, Joss Whedon did a great job with Avengers. I don't think every studio has a Joss Whedon that can do it. Yeah, and well, that's the thing when they did it with the Avengers, but they also had uh, six movies leading up to the Avengers Correct. that let you know what was going on. And plus, again, I'm just not a big Fantastic Four fan. I think, yeah. uh, you know, they're all excited about it, and you know, rightfully so. It's their pro, you, know, yeah. you know, their, you know, property. Well, I'd rather than be excited than be upset that they're doing movies. But the problem is, I mean, you know, they're doing, they're announcing the second one again. Have you seen the the first Fantastic Four movies? They're not good. <laughs> <laughs> well, just well, going back to what I said earlier, it's one of those. Why why are they revisiting a movie that was made? What six, seven, eight years ago? Yes, the seven, same eight way. Years, yeah. The same way with the Spider-Man reboot of going back to yeah. the beginning and going back to the beginning. Come up with something new or yeah. a different take on it. We don't need a Spider-Man origin story four years after seeing Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. Well, yeah, that's the thing. I would be fine without an origin story of the Fantastic Four. Go ahead and just put them out there. Everyone knows their origin. You're not going to be changing it much from the other movie. So just put it out there and said these events happened. Uh, there might be some uh, five minute up. flashback. Yeah, maybe a five minute flashback to say this is what happened, and, and then continue with the new story. I think that's the way they should do it. I hope they don't do a, the, the new Fantastic Four is a complete origin, which 
You know they're probably going to. Uh, of course. Of course, Doctor Doom's going to be in it. Hopefully, the Doctor Doom's better than in the last one. Oh, yeah, that was the biggest problem I had with that, was that I don't know what they did with Doctor Doom. But. Actually, my biggest problem with the first Fantastic Four, not the Corman one, but the, <laughs> the studio <laughs> one, is there's no action. It was the most boring film ever. Oh, at the very end, there was action. Exactly. Literally, what, 30 seconds? And, and on the bridge, when they first announced themselves to the public. So they had two action scenes. That was not action on the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> but, but but she took her clothes off. So you didn't see action. anything. She's invisible. Oh. <laughs> Damn you. <laughs> so there you go. There's your news of the geek for the week. Uh, ooh, that rhymed. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's weird how that worked. <laughs> Oh, so then uh, what would be next? It's time for Box Office Bombs. That new intro was by Marty, who we met on Twitter. He's one of our fans. Uh, Marty, thank you very, very much for that. <laughs> yes, Marty, uh, I think that's pretty good. Uh, we might be calling you up for some more if you're into it. Personally, Marty, if you want to send us some more for other, uh, you know, little categories that we have here. Yeah, other... yeah. T- take over my voiceovers because I know they aren't good. Yeah, <laughs> send them to me. I mean, we'll be more than happy to put this on. Uh, that's for any fans out there. If you want to send us some stuff, uh, yes. you know, for some intros for some segments, uh, you know. I think, now, uh, now, granted, we'll be judging and grading you. Correct. But, you know, who cares about our judgment and grades? We need something for Chris Pratt news. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if Chris Pratt's listening, send something in. Sure. <laughs> and top five we need something for. But, yes, thank you, Marty. It was very well done. Very well done. Uh, first off, for box office bombs, Need for Speed. Woohoo! How did that do? Uh, that bombed in third place. Uh, it didn't do horrible in terms of money. It did $17 million, but it was on a $66 million budget, and they expected it to be a lot better than $17 million. So that's why it was the bomb. It was the bomb. Um, now granted, it will probably end up making its money back correct. In, in the theater. And then you got the overseas money that will bring it in. And but, Jeff but, is usually on Box Office Mojo to, uh-huh. you know, correct me on everything I got wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I like to correct you when you get things wrong. Uh, the best part is, Nick, what's my favorite movie lately? Pompeii! I thought that was your favorite movie of all time. It is! Yes, I love Pompeii. The good news is karma is striking me back because I got in the car yesterday morning to go to work, and what was on? The Pompeii theme uh, song from the soundtrack. I still have yet to hear this song. Are you serious? I don't listen to the radio stations that would play it, so I don't know where I'm supposed to hear it from. I don't in my car, but I've been taking my wife's car since she's been on maternity leave, Uh, and now i got the crappy radio. (laughs) I can't listen to iTunes, or I mean podcast on my iPhone so now I'm like, son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm listening to yeah. regular radio. Yeah. Oh, do you want the bad news for Need for Speed? I just pulled that Go up. Go ahead. It made its money back with the foreign boxes oh, already. Oh, fudge. It's made over $68 million worldwide on a $66 million budget. Okay, well, what makes me feel better is advertising. Probably $10 million, Yes, right? okay. It hasn't made it yet. Okay. <laughs> with all the advertising they threw in. Okay, so next week it will. <laughs> but it bombed at the domestic. That makes me yes. happy. Thank you, America, for seeing the lights. <laughs> Uh, Pompeii has made a total of $22 million domestically on a $100 million budget. Fuck you, Pompeii. Thank you very much. <laughs> but if it's your favorite movie, why are you and, wanting to fuck it? And, uh, Nick, did you see the previews for Pompeii? I, I saw some previews for Pompeii. Did it look good? No. Did it? No. Oh. You can go to our uh, the, Facebook the volcano, page. And, the volcano exploded yes. and then people cried. And yes. Then, yeah. Jeff Morris would like it because it's historical, <laughs> as we learned last week. <laughs> what is it historically accurate? Well, it well, the bl- uh, uh, volcano did blow up and cover the city. Well, I that did, much is accurate. We did get a Kickstarter, <laughs> not official Kickstarter, but Jeff, your brother texted me and said he will pay for our two tickets and a bag of popcorn if we went to see Pompeii. Uh-huh. <laughs> is our time worth twenty two dollars? <laughs> Uh, well, you, we actually said we would do it. So if Jim actually comes up with the yep. uh, it comes it comes through, I suppose we're oh god we're committed. Ugh, I guess so, Jim. I'll do it. <laughs> and you know, I did watch the preview this or the trailer again for it this week, thinking you know maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it does. You know, maybe I've been a little too harsh. Nope. Trailer makes it even look worse than I remembered. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm. Uh, uh, yeah, looking at uh, what Pompeii's done. Looks like it's been out for a month. Yes. And it still has not made its $100 million budget back. What's it made foreign? Foreign, it made $60 million, so it's up to, like, 80. 83 Okay. Uh, yeah. And they, then you got advertising. Yeah, so so they, they, they will probably reap their money back 
maybe make a little money in the uh, second DVD market. I thought you were going to say the market. sequel. Maybe no. the sequel. Yeah, the, the <laughs> sequel. Pompeii 2, The Return. <laughs> Is it going to be the archaeological dig of Pompeii? <laughs> I found something over here. I think it's a pot. <laughs> what? That was exciting. <laughs> oh, look. These two skeletons are holding each other. It's love. Oh. No, they were just ducking cover. <laughs> <laughs> that is how you uh, avoid uh, the lava from a volcano. According to South Park, you duck and cover. <laughs> this one's under a desk. <laughs> uh Number one, on the other end, <laughs> the good box office news, uh, Mr. Peabody and Sherman took number one. In its second week, it rebounded. Second week took number one. That's pretty good. Uh, made $21.8 million domestically with a total of $63 million uh, total. Technically, it is kind of a box office bomb because it's made $63 million domestically on a $145 million budget. Again, how the hell did this cost $145 million to make? <laughs> That's that? just from you saying that it's... Where did that $145 million go? Did Ty Burrell from Modern Family cost $100 million to get his voice? <laughs> My God. Do your kids have any interest in this movie? No. Okay. They, they're really not... Uh, don't really tune into that. When into the, the shows movies? that they watch, they don't get to see that kind of okay. commercial that they get. My son is four, and he's really into it. Luckily... It's been kind of pushed to the side. He hasn't seen previews for it recently. And I'm like, I wouldn't mind seeing it, but I'm like, oh, the more I see previews, I'm like, oh, I don't know if I could. <laughs> and I just kind of like that it cost $145 million to make. Jeff, you finding some facts over there on it? Uh, I'm just trying to pick up uh, Mr. Peabody. Apparently, to type it into Box Office Mojo, I need to put the period after, after Mr. Mister. <laughs> or it won't show up. Uh, Why do you put in the period after M-I-S-T-E-R? Mr. M R. Oh, oh my bad. <laughs> this is it, Mr. Mister. Mr. Mister. <laughs> um, it looks like worldwide they've made their money back. Okay. Uh, eighty-five million foreign for a total of one hundred and fifty-four million on a hundred and forty-five million dollar budget. So, uh, with the advertising and stuff like that, a couple more weeks uh, they'll be in the profit. So. It does make me laugh. Uh, make me wonder, like Mr. Peabody and Sherman, like. I don't know if there's a big calling for it, but you never see any kids' toys for this in the aisles. Like when you go to Target or, well, never go to Walmart. <laughs> not, the ones by us are not that good. Sorry, Walmart. <laughs> you have some really nice stores. Not by us. <laughs> um, you never see, like, the toys for a lot of the cartoons. Like, Lego Movie came out with toys. But that's what, about what? it. It's based on toys. Well, correct. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> That you glue together. <laughs> glue them. The craggle. <laughs> um, 300, Rise of Empire, uh, fell to number two. Made $19 million. Uh, That one actually has made a total of $78 million domestically. Has a $110 million budget, which still, it has less of a budget <laughs> than Peabody and Sherman. <laughs> well, uh... So, 300 is going to make its money back if it hasn't already to foreign. Uh, in the foreign market. Yeah, it's about doubled the domestic in the foreign market. So it's yeah. 240 some million yeah. worldwide. So you so. know what that means? 300, the three cool. <laughs> 303! Yay! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that will be about the archaeological dig. <laughs> hey, look, Ooh. look, I found, it looks like an urn. <laughs> <laughs> that could be big. Pompeii 2 versus 303. Oh. The same weekend, kind of like uh, Deep Impact and uh, whatever uh, Armageddon. <laughs> Ooh, that would that would be interesting. And then uh, this coming week, uh, what is this weekend coming up? What day? March twenty uh, third. The twenty first, twenty second. Whatever. In, in that in that range, like we yeah. know dates. Come on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Divergent. And Muppets Most Wanted opens this weekend. Yes, uh, I was lo looking up Divergent and. Uh, they aren't sure, you know, they're expecting, based off of pre-sales and everything, mm -hmm. to pull in about $60 million opening weekend. That's pretty good. And it was an $80 million budget. Wow, look at you with the facts. Yeah. I, I didn't I, have any facts on this one. <laughs> yeah, I, I looked it up, and, and so they're expecting it, you know, just based on pre-sales to, to pull in $60 million, and they're trying to, they're, they're deciding... Well, we consider that a bomb based on what all these other mm -hmm. adaptations like your Twilights and your uh, Hunger Games are doing, which is kind of like the, the, the uh, young adult readers is what it's based off of. And so they're like, well, they're, they're pulling in $100 million, so we're not sure if $60 million is good enough. I'm like, uh, get over yourself. $60 million for a uh, property that a whole lot of people don't know about. 
if is you're over twenty, stellar. if you're over twenty five, I don't think you do. Yeah, and I mean it, the movie doesn't look bad to me. I you know can't judge. Do you have it any yet. interest? Yes, you can judge it. It's oh, America, yes, damn right. it! It's America. I can judge it. <laughs> I, I, I'm actually interested in seeing it. Uh, I, I, you know, whether it'll be good or bad, I'll judge. But I, I do want to see it, and I think it has a potential of being good. Have you seen previews for this, Nick? No, I haven't. I, I see keep seeing the same trailer for it. It does. I'm not offended by it, like Pompeii, but <laughs> I, it doesn't really do much for me. I'm. I hope it does well. I have nothing yeah. against it. Um, I will say, I found this out today. Like everybody in my office at work that's under 25 is going nuts for this show, this movie. Oh, really? And I'm like, I have never even heard. And everybody's yeah. read about it. And I'm like, so is it basically these guys have Jedi force powers? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, that's <laughs> fine. And they're like, it's Jedi force powers in the Hunger Games. Yeah, in a dystopian future where... So there yeah. you go. So, you know, good for them. I've heard Muppet Snow's one that has not gotten good reviews. I well, think, I'm hoping they don't put too many cameos in it. but Oh, no, they threw cameos out there. <laughs> I mean, they, they advertise the cameos. Yeah. I mean, that's their push is all the people that are in it. So if you're hoping for not a whole lot of cameos, you already I like the first one out. because they had a lot of subtle cameos. Zach Galifianakis was yeah. in it. <laughs> he was a hobo. <laughs> <laughs> the first one, you mean the most recent the before reboot. this. <laughs> the the, the Muppet. first one was the Muppet movie. That was one of the best movies of all time. I agree. And I even like the uh, the reboot of it with Jason Segel, the Muppets yeah. movie. Oh, I enjoyed that. Um, uh, I know people complained about it because it was too much about the Siegel. humans and not the, the Muppets themselves. But, I mean, I enjoy it. Most of the Muppets stuff. I mean, well, I shouldn't say most of the Muppets stuff because things like the Muppet Treasure Island and that stuff I thought was a Muppet little Muppet Christmas Carol was good. It was I like all right. that one. Uh, It was all right. Well, you're wrong! <laughs> now, now... I thought about throwing the Great Muppet Caper as one of my top favorite sequels of all time because I love that. Well, it could have but... ruined your uh, list more than Grease <laughs> too. I I still cannot believe that you did not come up with that before he said it. I thought how he long had... have you known Jeff? <laughs> Way too long to not how know many that. How times has that conversation come up <laughs> and you did not know that was going to be on his list? Because we're doing a list of the top five. I thought he would have some good ones in there. Well, I did top five my. Favorites. Well, that's fine, but yeah. still, <laughs> it wasn't good. Yeah. Well, no, it was so bad that it was enjoyable. You know what? Put, why don't you put fucking Pompeii 2 on the next list, okay, for our top of favorite sequels? Uh, that won't make it, I'm sorry. <laughs> so there you go. There's there's your box office news. Again, thanks, Marty, for the uh, for the uh, shout-out yes, and the yes, intro. Yes, thanks, Marty. Thanks for anybody, like I said, anybody who wants to throw something our way, we'll at least uh, give it a thought, but we do appreciate Marty's effort. <laughs> That's right, ladies and gentlemen, everybody's favorite segment, Chris Pratt News. Yay. Woo! Since that John Noble wouldn't let us do it anymore. <sighs> Stupid cease and desist. <laughs> <sighs> Nick, you got anybody in the attorney section that we can talk to about that? No. <laughs> okay, good, good, good call. Okay, uh, Chris Pratt News this week. He grew up in Lake Stevens, Washington, uh, and his wife Anna Ferris is also from that state as well. So All there right. you go. There's All your right. Chris Pratt news. It's pretty exciting. Yes, excellent. Um, they are Washingtonians. And I'll give a shout out at his Twitter feed, uh, at Pratt Pratt Pratt. It's a pretty funny, uh, pretty funny uh, Twitter account. Yes, so if you listen or follow people's tweets, we suggest following Chris Pratt. And then Pratt, bombard Pratt, Pratt. him with, you know, hey, listen to History of Bad Ideas podcast. Come yes, on. Yeah, say, hey, they talk about you all the time. You would love to hear That's this. That's right. Guys. Come on to our show. Yes, come on over. So, <laughs> uh, next is Hidden Gems. We got any Hidden Gems this week? Uh, I'm a little out this week. Okay. I, I haven't been digging. Oh, congratulations. Yay! <laughs> Jeff's out. <laughs> Woo! We're a very gay friendly <laughs> podcast, so congratulations, Jeff. No problem. <laughs> Go ahead, Nick. Go ahead. Nick looked like he was. He was waiting for good old Fred to to kick the bucket to, to come out. That's right. That's what I wanted to do under the news of the geek. We wanted to celebrate the death of uh, was it Reverend Fred uh, Phelps. Phelps. So yeah, uh, to all the uh, people at the 
freak church, or I'm sorry, the no, uh, no, 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 gotta be nice. <laughs> not to them. No, <laughs> we do not have to be nice to them. If you want to be nice to them, I don't. I'm not coming on the show anymore. <laughs> Anybody that thinks it's a good idea to pick it, uh, the funerals of soldiers, uh, gets no love from this podcast. There you go. All so, right, okay. So now we'll move on <laughs> to the top five, and we do top need an intro to this. So anybody out there, seriously, top five, help top us. Top five, yes. <laughs> uh, this week's. It's top five overrated movies. And uh, let me tell you, our Facebook page and our Twitter feed was blowing up because I put this out there yesterday uh, for any suggestions from fans. If you followed us, follow us on Twitter or on Facebook, you would know this. And Tumblr. <laughs> <laughs> Although I don't know if that went out on Tumblr. So. And we're on ChristianMingle.com. Uh, <laughs> Hot or not. Hot or not. <laughs> it paired me up with Fred Phelps. <laughs> uh, what is this hot or not, Nick? I, I've only heard about it. I listen to Bob and Tom, and they talk about some of this stuff. Hot or not is basically, it's pictures. All okay. of this is a picture. And if you think someone's hot, you click on it. Is there hot? Uh, and this is just the way that they've described it. I'm not sure that this is exactly how okay. it works That's or not. That's pretty much it, I think. You click on if they're hot, and if they click on that you're hot, <laughs> you can talk to each other and decide if you want to meet or hook up or whatever you want to do. Basically, it's all visual, all... Yeah. So. Well, you get most relationships that start off well that way, so there you go. Well, you know, no good relationships start from inside a bar. That is true, that is true. <laughs> oh, shit. Anyways. <laughs> uh, anyways, top five overrated movies. Uh, my wife mentioned Princess Bride. And I, we boo her for that. I Ooh. do not know how I married her. She told me this before no we got married. Start in a bar. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I did meet her in a bar. <laughs> um, yeah, the uh, she she cannot stand Princess Bride. And I oh. asked her this a couple nights ago, and immediately I didn't even have to finish the sentence. She goes, "Princess Bride." <laughs> So she didn't mention it. She shoved it down yes. your throat. Then. Okay. Rodents of unusual size. <laughs> R-O-U-S's? Yeah, they don't exist. <laughs> ah! uh, <laughs> see, that's not a clue. Uh, quotes are hot. Yeah. Suck, suck that drinking game. <laughs> to make a long story short. Too late. We all arrived one by one. Finish your drink. Mm. Uh, I can't do that. <laughs> oh. um, so some of the listener choices this week included Avatar. Uh, they people on Twitter and Facebook are saying Avatar, No Country for Old Men, uh, Andrew from Bad Idea, uh, B- Best of the best Worst, Best of the Worst, yeah, <laughs> mentioned No Country, and he also mentioned Inception. Yeah, a- Andrew, I got a bone to pick. Uh, <laughs> I like both those movies, so uh, they better not show up on your uh, Best of the Worst. <laughs> uh, Inception, uh, yeah, Citizen Kane was my brother Doug, and to be honest with you, I watched that in film yeah. class in college, and. <laughs> I get why it was such yeah. revealed because it did change movies. You know, it had the yeah. way they shot it. I with, get it. With something like Citizen Kane, I think you got to take into account, you know, the time and the era in which it was made. Yeah, is it a movie that would do well today and hold no. up to today's standards? No. And it wasn't but, that great of a film. It's just yeah. he changed how movies were made. Oh, actually, I, I would even disagree. I think it's pretty good of a film. I mean, just j- just the technology has advanced so much that you know. Obviously, he wouldn't have made the same film today, but I think uh, I think the ideas behind it or whatnot, I, I really uh, think that those hold up. You have Grease 2 on your top five list for a sequel, so you know what? No, no, you don't win this <laughs> argument. <laughs> I think uh, I win every argument because of that. <laughs> um, and then also, uh, Kevin out there put Spider-Man. Uh the original, I guess the amazing, uh, Probably, Sam Raimi. Yeah, the first uh, one with Tobey Maguire. And you know what? It partner. doesn't hold up. He's right. I mean, it was, yeah. I don't know. It just I, has I, not It up. came out of a time when anybody who was dying for a good uh, superhero movie, I mean, the Spider-Man, or I'm sorry, the Superman and the Batman movies had stopped for a while. So it was just pretty much X-Men and then Spider-Man came yeah. out. So uh, Daredevil. <laughs> uh, came out after Spider-Man. But. That's true. Spider-Man was 2002, I think. Yeah, that sounds about right. So, um, so I don't disagree. Uh, Morris, who was our guest from last week, <laughs> he put T- Terminator 2 and Aliens, I think, just to spite me. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, just to spite you. So, Nick, you're a better guest already. <laughs> I try. <laughs> well, you're not even a guest. You're a color man, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. So thank you, listeners, for... Uh, and, re- and I will say none of that we mentioned are on my list at all. Um. 
we'll get to that. Anyways, <laughs> uh, so thank you, listeners, for uh, interacting with us. And uh, like I said, if you follow us on Thursdays and Fridays, we do send out uh, the top five, a preview of it, um, what we're going to talk about, and we do ask for listener feedback. So follow us on Facebook and Twitter, guys, and have a little fun with us. Uh, okay, top five overrated movies. Uh, who wants to go first? I'll go ahead and start okay. us off here. Um, and I'm not saying this is a bad movie, but this is a movie that I've noticed on like a bunch of people's lists all over the place as like one of the best movies ever. And it's just one I thought was okay. And the list is not bad movies. No, it's not bad movies. It's just r- movies that may be good, but they have been. R- everybody talks about how great they are, and they're not bad, but they're just not. They're just. I, I just don't think they're. Uh, they're not as good as everybody everyone thinks. says they are. Okay. Um, so I want my number five on my list is Fight Club. Okay. I, I I enjoy the movie. It's okay, but wow, the way people talk about it being so great and one of the best ever, and I don't see it. I mean, tell me where I'm wrong, but I just don't understand why people rank that so high. You won't get that from me. I, I, I don't disagree with you. It wasn't on my list, but I don't disagree with yeah. you. Nick, you got anything on that one? Uh, nothing, Bob. Okay, good job. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have an honorable mention. Oh, I didn't even do honorable mentions. Lord That's of the good. Rings. I knew you were going to mention. Oh, actually, the fact that it's only an honorable mention for you I respect it's the Phil, uh, Peter Jackson. I was going to say Phil Jackson. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> He's on another re- <laughs> rebuilding project. Yeah. Uh, Peter Jackson, uh, I respect what he did with it. Uh, visually, it's, yeah. it's great. Yeah. Um, I am bored to death by it. Um, mm. I thought the books were kind of boring too sorry i just wasn't into it nothing against it but and the movies i can't put up there because it did so well at the box office not that that's a yeah no that's actually a reason to probably throw it on your list but (laughs) you know i respect what they did with it that it was truer to the books than most people thought it was going to be so i'll give lord of the rings pass next honorable mention uh andrew i agree with you no country for old men oh my god fucking kill me at the end of that movie Um, jeez old people first off my issue is you're not going back this guy is not going back to give that the guy in the desert water after eight hours, okay? That was my biggest issue. Okay. Yeah. And then it was just slow at the end, so... It was slow throughout. Correct. I, and, but, I mean, that was the pacing they chose to do. So, that's and, my honorable mentions. Sorry, No mm-hmm. Country for Old Men. I know one of our fans, Bob, out there, is, uh, he tweeted me, or uh, his message, actually, he texted me, and said that uh, Andrew and I should never be allowed to watch movies again because of No Country for Old Men, <laughs> <laughs> if, if it was on our list. <laughs> Sorry, it's overrated. So, uh, number five for me, Anchorman. Uh, I kept oh. thinking, actually, I have two comedies on there. Okay. Uh, possibly three, if you think about it. Uh, Anchorman, it, you know, I liked it. It was enjoyable. I thought it was overrated. I cannot stand everybody saying, oh, it was so great, yeah. and then quote the movie. There is memorable lines. Where'd you get the trident? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, well uh, pretty much, I'll, I'll agree to almost any Will Ferrell movie is overrated. Uh, is overrated. Well, if it's rated good, it's overrated. Okay. I mean, most people agree Land of the Lost was crap, so that's not overrated. But, I mean, I, I probably shouldn't put an honorable mention because as I look down at my list, I'm like, it's not on there. Uh, I probably should say Elf It would be an honorable mention for me. I liked that movie until uh, they sang. I didn't like the movie any way, shape, or form. Other than I like looking at Zoe, Zoe Deschanel. Yeah. Other than that, I didn't like any part of that movie. I liked her until the, the iPhone commercial. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's raining. You can see it. <laughs> you don't have to ask Siri. <laughs> Uh, so Anchorman, it's enjoyable. I like it, but I think it's vastly overrated. It didn't help that Anchorman Two was so bad. Yeah, oh, and I awful. bought into it. Hook, awful. line, take sinker. A drink. Take a drink. <laughs> Hook, line, and sinker. I bought into it. I thought it was going to be good. I even got you, Jeff, to oh, go along with me. To, I'm like, okay, we'll go to the midnight showing. I don't know what you're expecting from the movie. <laughs> and I did not expect that. <laughs> it was actually even worse than I was expecting. It was, and I thought, okay, that got all the you know the issues out of the first one because the first one was not great. You know, it, it jumped around a lot. Oh man, the second one just made it worse. So Anchorman's number five for me. Nick, what do you got? I'm going to go with an honorable mention as well. Okay. I didn't originally, but after you talking, Jason, it's I'm going to have to go with just lump the whole Harry Potter series in there. Ooh. And you're a Harry Potter fan. Well, the movies are okay. They're 
Daniel Radcliffe is just terrible. He wanted to say awful. He wanted to say, awful. Wanted to say awful. He did. <laughs> that was that was four. I think. No, was that two or three? <laughs> he he was not. He's not a good actor in those movies. And and some of the other main characters are not good actors in those movies. In the, the first one, it's very prevalent. Yes, in the first yeah. movie, it's very bad. I, I think well, it carries over probably in in the first couple of movies yeah. where yeah. they're really just trying to sort things out on, on getting themselves getting yeah. their feet wet and acting. And then, even carrying over into to the dual movies for the the seventh book, yeah. um, he he just over dramatic. I mean, yeah. it, it's like he took an acting class from the guy on the corner. <laughs> Acting! Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I'm going to have to say I'll agree with Nick on uh, the Harry Potter for his honorable mention because I actually had Harry Potter movies as my number four. Oh, that's your number four. That, that was my number four. The, I, I, well, they made eight movies, mm-hmm. and there is one that I will say is a good movie. Which one? The third one, Prisoner of Azkaban. Okay. And, uh, you know, the Christopher Columbus movies were just, uh, I, I don't know, they were tough to watch. I, I mean, I got the gist of the story, but I, I didn't enjoy them that much. Has he made any? Has he directed any good films, Christopher Columbus? I'll have to look up what he's done. I don't remember the rest of his resume. I feel like but, there's not much out there that he's done as well. But uh, the, the, then the third one with uh, Alfonso Cuaron, who won the Oscar this year for Best Director for Gravity, he did the third one. I'm like, okay, I, I can see where this is going, even though I've been yelled at by some people because I said this was a good movie but people who read the book said it's an awful movie because they cut too much out of the book i said i think that's what saved the movie was they knew how to edit and they knew how to pace which the rest of the movies even after uh, you know and then quran stepped out after one movie and the rest of the stuff it, it just i didn't feel did he beat out hakeem olajuwon for director <laughs> i don't i didn't know no, no, no he, he was singing he oh was sorry, singing. sorry 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 <laughs> hakeem olajuwon but but so i'm just uh well obviously i uh going for my number four there with well nick's talking about his honorable mention and i, I will say i'm surprised nick because i knew you kind of liked harry potter i didn't harry think you potter. would put it there well for my number five and i'm gonna preface this with that i've never actually been able to watch the whole movie Uh-oh. because <laughs> well that's that's a good enough reason for it to be <laughs> if overrated was is avatar oh dances uh, with smurfs yeah. That was actually up yeah. on the list, too, from the listeners. Yeah, the listeners threw that out there. I, the, the biggest problem is most people I've talked to, personally, never liked it. And we talked. I don't know people who like No one I've ever talked to told me that they liked it. It made a lot of money. It made a lot of money. Everyone wanted to see it. I think there was a giant but, buzz around the movie when it oh, first came out because buzz, of all yeah. the CGI and all the special effects. And they were and good. I'm not going to take that away from them. There were people that I... It either worked with or heard talking about it that had seen it multiple times within the opening weekend even that it just didn't stack up to that after I've seen to it watch. on TBS TNT one of them whatever FX yeah. I was bored I mean it, whoa sorry about that <laughs> just hitting stuff on the table here sorry about that guys um <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't understand. And we talked about it a couple weeks ago. They're making two, three, and four. They're making three more sequels. And it's like, who's demanding this? And I just want to know, when when's that sequel coming out? Because didn't that movie come out almost five years ago? It's close. Uh, uh, yeah, that's about right, I think. Well, my uh, Doug, number one fan, did put on our Facebook page, he asked if I was going to take the kids to Avatar Land at Disney. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't blame you. Avatar, uh, Avatar barely missed on mine, and the reason is I, I think I just don't care enough about it. That's why. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, I, I've just heard enough enough people knock it that I'm saying, okay, so there's an, there's enough reaction against it that I didn't. Do you put think it's overrated? Go- do you but... think it's going to be the number one movie? Well, in money, which is bullshit because yeah, yeah, Gone with the Wind got it. Let's be honest. <laughs> do you think it's going to go from number one and then the sequel is just going to bomb? I mean, oh, I, I think the the difference will be significant. Uh, significant, yeah. Like it might be the worst first to second movie percentage ever. wise. Yeah, percentage wise, you can quickly see three and four being cut after two comes out. <laughs> well, that's what I'm thinking. I mean, you know, James Cameron said he's going to film these back to back and possibly back to back to back. And I'm mm. like, dear God, man, you know, let's see what the number two does because I don't think it's going to have any legs. He's going to do it so he can get paid before well, correct. it gets cut. Yeah. <laughs> Thing is, though, he doesn't need the money. <laughs> yeah. 
Unless he goes on too many Titanic uh, expeditions, you know. <laughs> Where's Titanic? I found dishes. I need to build this new submarine to go 40,000 feet under the ocean. Yeah. I went lower than anyone else. <laughs> I found Rose's pendant. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, what's Christopher Columbus done? Uh, Christopher Columbus. Besides discover America. Yeah. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Yeah. Chris Columbus. Uh, Adventures in Babysitting. Okay. Heartbreak Hotel. Uh. Home Alone. Uh. Only the Lonely. Oh. Uh. Home Alone Two: Lost in New York. Dear God, stop it. <laughs> Mrs. Doubtfire. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that should have been another. Uh. It was better. Than- <laughs> That should have been an awful. Everyone take a drink. Uh, <laughs> they didn't okay. make a sequel to it. They didn't make a which sequel. we learned last week. <laughs> yeah. uh, nine months. Uh. Uh, <laughs> stepmom. Oh God! Make it stop. Bicentennial Man. <laughs> the first two Harry Potter movies. Harry Potter. And then this one I actually like. Rent. Okay, I love Rent. He did Rent. Uh, favorite musical. Uh, I love you, Beth Cooper. No. And Percy, Nobody loved Beth Cooper. <laughs> Percy Jackson and the Olympians, The Lightning Thief. That didn't work out too well for them. Uh, those are his director. Uh, so he peaked at Adventures in Babysitting. Uh, he plummeted with Bicentennial Man. I'm not even going to put Adventures in Babysitting up that high <laughs> oh, either. <laughs> he came back with Rent. <laughs> and then he plummeted again. <laughs> Okay, I like Rent. Yeah, I... <laughs> yeah uh, there's a Christopher Columbus movie on the list that I like. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Rent, uh, Adventures of Babysitting did have Thor in it. It had somebody dressed as Thor in it. Still had Thor. <laughs> so, Nick was your number four. Number four, I went with Independence Day. <gasps> Today we celebrate. <laughs> I, I can agree with Nick on this one. <laughs> I agree with you. Too. I, I, I don't. I, it didn't cross my mind. Uh, I'm trying to think if that should have made my list. It doesn't age well, does it? It, it, it ages just awful. Ter- <laughs> it, it, it does not age well at all. It, it's a terrible movie that but Will has- Smith and uh, Malcolm. Oh, um, not Malcolm. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Jeff that's Goldberg, from Jurassic Jeff Park. Yeah. <laughs> Malcolm is, yeah, that's how I relate You know him, him as Malcolm. I know him as Brendel Fly, so. <laughs> you know, it was really good until the ship got eaten by a Transaurus Rex, and then it just went downhill. <laughs> how, how funny would it have been if Will Smith and Jeff Goldblum go to save the world and Transaurus Rex comes up and eats it? <laughs> I didn't hear no fat lady. <laughs> <laughs> I have tiny arms. Uh, <laughs> I can't grab the ship. <laughs> wow. Uh, you know what? I like it. <laughs> Who's our buddies at the what playground? Uh, playground Zero. Yes. Tell them their episode has to be about <laughs> mashing up Jurassic Park and Independence Day. <laughs> Jurassic Park versus Independence There's Day. There's your <laughs> make it. Go with it. I want to see what you guys do. Oh, we're so high and mighty with Indiana Jones that we did so well on. <laughs> Fucking do this. <laughs> uh, okay, so go ahead, Nick. Independence Day. Is there anything more to be said about I, that? I think you've said it all. <laughs> Agree. Agree. I concur. Should have concurred. Uh, uh, you're number four, Jason. Um, okay. Annie Hall. Ooh, okay. And dot, 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 any fucking Woody, Woody Allen movie. Wow. Um, Woody I will Allen s- hater. Okay. It's not that I hate him. Uh, anything else? I think with Jason Biggs, we saw yeah. that was decent. Um, okay, wow, and that's like one of his minor ones. Yeah, I didn't know what font the guy was using when he was <laughs> typing in the beginning. <laughs> okay, thank you, Garrett. Yes, uh, <laughs> somebody we were watching with when they were typing in the beginning of of the anything else, he kept questioning what type of font on the typewriter they were using. What, t- what font do you think that is? What size do you think? I don't know. I'm using? trying to listen to the fucking plot. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Anyways, <laughs> um, <laughs> Annie Hall is. Good, but I am so tired of every freaking award season that they have to show clips from it. Okay, we get it. Okay, let's move on. It was made 30 years ago, you know. Yeah, I, I'm going to say probably the reason he's upset about it is because it beat out Star Wars for Best Picture. You know what? I don't even <laughs> think Star Wars deserved Best Picture. I'll agree. I agree. I love Star Wars, but I don't think it deserved Best Picture. Did it deserve it over Annie Hall? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anything Woody Allen does, I just get tired of hearing about. It. He does a great job writing for women. I'll give him yeah. that. Um, you know, he does a good job with that. There's not enough 
people that could write. Hell, make him write a, 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 a Wonder Woman movie. <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting. Have Do you seen, just curious, uh, have you seen the early Woody Allen comedies? Uh, I saw uh, like, uh, Kentucky Fried. No, not Kentucky. No, um, yeah, um, 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 what's the one with the, uh, shit. Uh, give me the name of the... Uh, he was in Bananas. Bananas. Okay. Yes. Yeah, Bananas, uh, Sleepers, Take the Money and Run. I've seen Take the Money and Run. Uh, Love and Death. I don't um, think it's all that. That's before he got... Uh, Annie Hall was pretty much the change to from getting into more dramatic stuff. But, it's called uh, Manhattan Story. Or... Manhattan. Manhattan, yeah. Ugh. Oh. Um, or Manhattan Murder Mystery. I did see that. Okay. Well, they, they had one called Manhattan I did see that. and one called Manhattan Murder it's Mystery. It's been a while since I've seen so. <laughs> yeah. But I am just... I get tired of, oh, we're going to give him more. Oh, look, he's not going to show up. Okay, we don't care. He'd probably be arrested. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Well, he's not Roman Polanski. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, I, I just get tired of seeing him. And then, personally, you know, who knows if it's true or not. I get tired of hearing about that because if it is true, oh. Oh, yeah. So, who knows? But, I mean, at the same time, you know, with his movies, it's like I just get tired of hearing about how great they are. And it's like they're good, but at the same time, let's let's take a step back. Annie Hall is not great, the greatest movie ever made. Yeah, and I think we pretty much lost uh, all our New York listeners. Sorry, New York. <laughs> he does a great job with the scenery. I will say he makes New York New York. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, no, no pun intended. <laughs> uh, but, but you're just tired of hearing about it, and we're talking overrated. And like I said, New York, he does great with scenery, and he does great with women roles. I'll, I'll give him props for that. Yeah. So there you go. So what's your number four, Jeff? Um, like I said, mine was Harry Potter. Oh, sorry. So. Number three, Jeff. Number three, uh, I'm going uh, Some Like It Hot. Ooh. It was, I, I know AFI put it as their number one comedy, and everyone talks about how great it is. And, I mean, I know it's an older movie and hasn't aged well, but even at the time it was out, did people realize that uh, they just did not make believable women? I mean, it really, about, when cross-dressing is used as the main gist of a story i beg to differ nuns on the run yes thank you <laughs> tootsie uh fit oh. the same I, I didn't like any of these movies uh the whole you know the, uh, but i mean wow those were like the two ugliest women on the face of the earth jack lemon and uh oh my god now i forgot his name uh white chicks <laughs> that, that that helps my the Wayans. Yeah, the Wayans. <laughs> they might be the ugliest women on the earth. Didn't Hightower cross dress in one of the police academy movies? <laughs> <laughs> Don't move, dirtbag. But I mean, but I mean, when people are putting that as a as as the best comedy of all time, it's like th th there's something wrong with the world. I'm sorry, I was off track there. Was yeah. it Police Academy the best comedy no. of all time, or something like it hot? <laughs> 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 So now we're quoting Police Academy movies. I'm talking How about do you not that. love our podcast? We go from Some Like It Hot to Police Academy. If those aren't the best two comedies out there, don't move to bank! <laughs> the parallels between the two movies are so close! <laughs> <laughs> okay, playground again. Do reboot Police Academy. <laughs> you can do it in Deanne Jones. Yeah. Police Academy with some like it hot. Yeah. You, <laughs> you can do Independence Day in Jurassic Park. Let's do <laughs> Police Academy with some like it hot. Mash it up, Playground Zero. Mash them up. I'm sure you can get Michael Winslow in. I don't think he's doing anything else. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. He's making noises on the street corner. Sign will make new noise for food. Could we hire him? And by hire, I mean like cook him dinner for our show. Can he do their sound effects? I, I don't even know if, our, if we can afford dinner for Michael Winslow. I got some lean cuisines upstairs in our house. We could get some lean cuisine in the studio. <laughs> Yeah, we might need to get Hungry Man. Oh, that's right. <laughs> 6,000 calories. <laughs> if you don't have a heart attack, you're not a man. <laughs> so I'm uh, glad we talked about something like it hot. <laughs> All right, number three, Jay. What's your number three? <laughs> did Jeff, do, or did Nick even do a number four? Yes, independent. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Jesus. Let us go. <laughs> this show has gone downhill quick. Uh, number three is another comedy. Uh, Bridesmaids. Uh, yeah, that, that was on my short list. Of course, now that you mentioned it, I should put Tootsie on there. Tootsie kind of Tootsie. irks me more. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> um, Bridesmaids, I thought it was overrated. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. It was funny. It was amusing. I but... blame it on the marketing um, because it kept billing. Oh, it's the female version of Hangover. Nothing like that. Yeah. Um, 
you know, I didn't think any of the lead characters were likable. Uh, Kristen Wiig was not likable. Yeah, and uh, she was supposed to be the big hit. Uh, then again, I've just never been a fan of Kristen Wiig on like Correct. anything she's done. Her Saturday Night Live, I thought she was overrated on that. You know, I, I honestly thought uh, the uh, Bridesmaids might have been the best thing she's ever done, in my opinion. That's not so- well, no, wait, I take that back. Best thing Kristen Wiig was ever ever did was the first season of the Joe Schmo Show. Oh, that's right. As Dr. Pat. There's a lot of <laughs> Joe Schmo show, uh, love here. Um, Ralph Gar- Garman, come on on. Come on a show. <laughs> yes, Ralph, you're invited on. Um, no, uh, Bridesmaids, I think part of it was marketing. Um, on the other end of it, not to go in tangent, but The Truman Show with Jim Carrey, I hated that movie originally because they billed it as the best film of the year, like Entertainment Weekly. And then I went and saw it. I thought, this is the best film of the year. Yeah. Looking back, now I watch it. I love Truman Show. Yeah. I thought it was, it's genius. Yeah. Um, and I think Bridesmaid is just the opposite. I mean, I think the marketing killed it. I, I just didn't care. Uh, I, again, I thought the characters were annoying. I didn't think they were nice. I didn't yeah. believe that they would be friends. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, um, most of them weren't. You know, it was an yeah. uh, in-law and a this and a that. But. So I'm going Bridesmaids. Okay, so number three, Nick, what do you got? Well, speaking of Tootsie, Jason, what about cross-dressing movies? Sorority Girls. I like Sorority Girls. <laughs> you do? <laughs> yes. I own that movie. Oh, wow. That is... <laughs> I like that movie. It has uh, Harlan William or Harlan. Uh, yeah, is it William? I don't know. Harlan, what's his name? Who does his Chewbacca? Uh, yes, <laughs> and he, he gets run over in the football game, and he goes to the girl that's like the six foot eight girl, and he goes, "I want my giant." <laughs> I love that movie. <laughs> have you seen it, Nick? Yes, I have. Do you like it? Yeah, it, it's. <laughs> It's humorous. Thank you. Yeah, he, pulls, he pulls the hair out of the drain. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. oh. It's better than Joanna, man. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Yeah, screw y'all. Sorority Girls is looking pretty good now. And, and, and it's Sorority Boys is the name oh, of Oh, Sorority Boys. Yeah. <laughs> we knew what you meant, but yeah, I, I was looking for it. Yeah, sorority Tyler Girls Williams. is the porn version. Yeah, it's, it's Sorority Boys. <laughs> But, of course, Sorority uh, Boys could be the porn version, too. <laughs> but I suppose if we, uh, you know, to get uh, Sorority Boys into our comic book geekiness, you know, starring Michael Rosenbaum, who played Lex Luthor. That's who it was. Film. I couldn't think of the yeah. lead. <laughs> With hair. He had hair. Well, it was a wig. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> because <laughs> he was in the middle of filming... Uh, Smallville. Smallville. So, and he shaved his head. <laughs> he wore a wig. and uh, More wigs uh, than more than one wig in Sorority Boys. But <laughs> Nick, next time you come on, we're going to top five cross-dressing movies. <laughs> Wow. Or movies with cross Yes. <laughs> Too awful. <awful-foo. laughs> Thanks for everything, Julie Newmar. Sorority Boys. Uh, Joanna Man. No, 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 no. That's not on any top list. Oh, wait. You're I'm saying good. Oh, I still what believe was you're putting Sorority Boys under good. What was the Adam Sandler, the Jack and you, Jack and Jill. No, no. <laughs> you shut your mouth when you're talking wait, wait, wait. to me about that, that, that movie. That wasn't about cross-dressing. He was actually playing a woman. <laughs> okay. I think you know, we could put that the, in there, too. The character wasn't cross-dressing. The, char- the actor was, but the character That would wasn't. be the bottom five of the cross-dressing <laughs> yeah, movies? Yeah, probably. <laughs> I would say that's the bottom five Adam Sandler movie, okay? <laughs> I think anything that he's made in the last five years is a bottom five. five. Ten, I would say ten. Maybe close to fifteen, <laughs> but... I'm sorry, when did Happy Gilmore come out? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, so my number yes. three is, uh, is Crash. Okay. Uh, that was on our Oscar... Yeah. Overrated best picture, or I mean, shouldn't have won best picture. Worst or, best picture movies. Yeah. You're going to have no argument from us. I well, I, I was. I, I still enjoy Crash. Um, probably not as good as. Uh, but honestly, the things that it was against that year, I have no problem with it winning the uh, Academy Award. Uh, I understand why people don't like it. I've heard the arguments. Nick, you can give us it, yours. It, it just <laughs> it just completely bored me. It was yes. it was a sleeper movie. It was yeah. not. You know, if I was if I wanted to take a good nap, stick that in. <laughs> but Don Cheadle, sometimes you just crash into somebody just to feel something. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> I so, hate so, that yeah. line. So I'm in the minority, in, in and this you know what? That is the but... third time I have said that line today. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I said it at work twice. <laughs> oh wow. You do work in claims. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, yeah. Sometimes I just crash into people just to feel something. No, you don't! <laughs> Drink like everyone else. 
or become Arn Patriot. <laughs> Arn, take a drink. Take a drink, I just said it. <laughs> so, you got anything else to say about Crash? No. <laughs> we um, can barely get a word uh, in. <laughs> did, did everyone give our threes? Yes, I think so. Jay, what's your two? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> this ship has gone down. <laughs> <laughs> um, any movie by Wes Anderson... Oh, man, you are hurting me. Bring the hate, people. <laughs> Bring the hate. <laughs> Fantastic Mr. Fox? i never seen that. Okay. I heard it was good. Now see that one. I, I, I can understand but, why some people aren't fans of his other movies. But... Rushmore? I liked. I you loved that, Rushmore. I have not seen Rushmore. Okay, so there but, you so, can... so that I, But, I mean, the other one, like uh, Royal Tenenbaums. <laughs> uh, I like that. Uh and I'm trying to think of some other ones. I, I must know. be drinking a lot because What's I'm throwing the... up over oh, here with the world. I, I wasn't a big fan of Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou. That was awful. I hated that. Take a drink. <laughs> um, the Darjeeling Limited. Darjeeling Limited. I did I think like Natalie that Natalie Portman got naked in that, so that was kind of good. You saw her butt. That was about it. <laughs> um, Moonrise Kingdom. Ugh. Okay. Does, doesn't he have a new one coming out? Yes. Soon too? Um, Budapest Hotel. Grand yeah. Budapest yes. Hotel. Yes. Which is getting wait, rave reviews. Oh, which... yes. They all get rave reviews. Like, you Jason know what? Per- yeah. It's because everybody's suffering from sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Insomnia. They just yeah. sleep there. Oh, my goodness. This yeah. is another one. It's kind of like Woody Allen. I ju- well, Woody Allen films I like yeah. to a point. I just think they're rated. Wes Anderson, I'm bored by them. I can't stand them. Uh, I loved Rushmore. And then ever since then, I could not stand Life of Quality. It's like, yeah. oh, we're being funny and trendy. Not trendy, yeah. but like, you know, we're so out there. Aren't we crazy? Yeah. No, you're not. You're a fucking boring movie. <laughs> God. So anything by Wes Anderson. And I'll politely disagree. Uh, I disagree as well. Really? <laughs> Nick, you're disagreeing? The I the Life Aquatic wasn't great, but it wasn't I don't think it's as bad as you're making it out to be. And, and I I do like the Royal Tenenbaums. And I supported you with the tra- Independence Day <laughs> Jurassic Park mashup. How dare you? <laughs> Let's agree to disagree. You know what? Let's put dra- uh, Raptors into the next uh, Wes Anderson movie. Then I'll watch. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> okay, number two, Jeff. Uh, my number two. Um, I don't want to get too political. Uh oh. But Bullworth. <laughs> Bowling for Columbine. Okay. Everyone talked about how great of a documentary this is, and it, it talked about oh so much, and I just found it to be a big piece of sty- uh, steaming propaganda shit. But you can walk into Canada's homes, their doors yeah. are unlocked. Well, and that, that's the thing is, some t- the movie, like, he's throwing it out there, trying to prove his point, turning it into this big piece of propaganda, and then he throws in con- contradictory things, like he's trying to say that uh, the, the laws and rules in America are so bad, guns are so easy to get, he goes up to Canada, finds out, you know, a big majority of Canadians own guns and they don't have the problems we have in America. Well, they don't have the violence. Yeah, they don't have the violence. And so now it it even hurts his argument of the movie he's trying to make. And But it, it just... It... it Kills. I think yeah. Jeff's going through a stroke over yeah. there, Nick. It, Look at him. It, Look at his brain. It bothers I think he's... me. It bothers the me. The steam is coming out of the ears. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. It's like flames? Flames on the side Take of my Take a drink. Face. It's a clue reference. That's the whole Burning. drink. <laughs> Heaving breath. <laughs> but uh, the point of making a documentary is to, you know, tell a story, you know, real story, get everything behind it. He's trying to tell a side of a story, so it just ru- is an awful documentary movie. Oh. Awful. Take awful. <laughs> awful. I'm just Take filling up my vodka here. Give me a second. But <laughs> as a documentary, it's not good. And, you know, I, I don't want to get into politics, but, I mean, his politics in the movie just, yeah, really have my ears steaming well, the, on the, that. The only issue is, though, it's not on just Michael Moore. I think a lot of documentary films now, they have an agenda. Oh, be, because of Michael Moore. Do you think? I I, I do. He, he has became popular. I mean, after that, you know, Fahrenheit 9-11, piece of propaganda, his, uh, the one well, he did on health care. I mean, uh, I mean and Roger and Me, I thought, was a well-done movie. That, that one told the story, you know... It, it, it showed, he turned the cameras on, him trying to get to talk to Roger Smith, CEO of uh, uh, GM. And the things that happened where, you know, he was getting shut out. That was a good, but then he just thought, you know, screw reality. I'm just going to throw in 
my skewed vision. And after that, everything he did was just a piece of propaganda. And, well, the problem is, too, like I said, I think a lot of documentary. I love a good documentary. I will watch documentaries above most other films, except Westerns. Good Westerns. Uh, <laughs> um, and comic books. But movies. But uh, I love documentaries. And I go looking for good ones. But a lot of them are propaganda. Not propaganda. They're one-sided. And that's yeah. the problem. I think back in the day, not to sound old, but you had more documentaries that were kind of, you know, both sides of it. Yeah. Or, and just you know, follow story. the subject matter. Correct. Go where the subject matter takes you. Don't force your view into the subject matter. And that's matter. why I think a lot of the issues are... Um, yeah. I, I will say one very good uh, documentary, not to go off here, is I believe, I hope this is the right title, uh, The Falling Man, I think it was called, The Fallen Man. Uh, it was about, um, not to sound depressing here, people, but uh, the guy that jumped out of the uh, 9-11 Towers. Oh, I think I heard about that, um, yeah. I watched it on vacation. My whole family <laughs> was asleep, so I was like, oh, it's 10.30, I can watch something. And uh, I watched it, and it was... It was rough to watch. I mean, it was amazing, um, but I believe it was The Fallen Man. I see uh, 9-11, The Falling Man. Yes, uh, that's it. 2006, uh, I think it was a TV movie is what it says. But Oh, it, it was a documentary. Well, a documentary okay. that was aired on TV, and, um, so that's fine. It was about trying to find the identity of the guy that jumped out of the window, and I know a lot of people did, but not to get too deep, but... Uh, it was the one that was taken a picture of and was shown oh, all it, over the world. It, it's an iconic yeah. image. And um, it, it, like I said, you think that at, by the end of the movie, spoiler alert, uh, <laughs> that you think you know who it is and the guy gives you an idea of who it is, uh, but you don't know for sure. Uh, so, I don't know and if you could ever know correct. for sure. But, but they interviewed his family, that could be. Yeah. But not to get all sad and depressing on it, but uh, take a look at that one. But yeah, yeah. I, like I said, it's tough to find a good documentary that isn't one-sided. Yeah, the documentaries have become biased propaganda. I mean, you might as well watch uh, Lenny Riefenstahl's uh, Nazi films the way uh, a lot Jeez. of Jeez! That's what it is. It, it's just propaganda. I'll Man. say it again. Propaganda. Take a drink. Propaganda. Oh my God. Just get all <laughs> political. Jeez. And I'm trying not to get political. I don't want to be political. He's having a stroke, podcast. Nick. Look at him. Look at him. He's, He's shaking. 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 Shaking a little. Shaking. I, 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 ah, ah, ah. So okay. anyways. So back, Nick, you're number two. Back to the police academy. Smash up with some <laughs> like it hot. You, you move. Don't no, move. Turn back. <laughs> Close. Sorry, sorry. The acting in this movie is about as good as that. Don't mock police academy acting. <laughs> I'm going to say my number two is Scarface. Ooh. Wow, okay. I don't disagree with you on that. I, I mean... I, I have to disagree with you on that because Michelle Pfeiffer's in the movie, so it's one of the best movies ever made. Please lightning. But other than that, go ahead. <laughs> I just, if you look at it in wherever, whatever era it's in, the acting is not good. What was it, 77? Uh, 70, oh, no, that's 74? probably even 80s, I think. I don't know. Anyways, go ahead, Nick. We'll find out. But pretty much all the way through the movie, none of it is... 83. 83. 1983. Wow. Okay. None of it is good cinematically at all throughout the entire thing. I mean, there's... It just doesn't... It hasn't aged well on top of it, the acting being terrible to begin with. <laughs> oh, I think it also doesn't age well because you have good fellows that came out after it. You know, you had some good, yeah. that type of movies, you know, the mobster yeah. and, you know, rising up. I think that's the problem yeah. with it too. Yeah. And but you're, you're trying to say Pacino overacts? <laughs> yeah. They're yeah. new to my little friend. <laughs> Al Pacino's in yeah. our studio. <laughs> hey, I'll, I'll give Nick props because that's probably, uh, yeah, a tough the, one that you think people are going to be mad at you for putting on, but, you know, I can't disagree. I thought that you were giving Nick props because that was the best impersonation we've had ever in this studio. <laughs> the, that might have been the best. Because my British, uh, <laughs> yeah. some just like it to burn. The, the last I don't know, part I about, think I did a good Russian. <laughs> the last part about Scarface that I'm going to go out and say is that, and this might be going out on a limb, but any of the dancing that takes place in Scarface, there's at least two people in this studio that can dance better Thank than you. any of the dancing that takes place in that movie. I, I have a feeling I'm not one of the two people <laughs> in the studio that can dance better than Scarface. You could. <laughs> you just need to prove it in a dance-off. <laughs> Some just like the world to bomb, Mr. Wayne. God dang it! What the hell am I doing? That's not you British. didn't even try it again. Quit trying. <laughs> So I'm just like it to fun, Mr. White. God dang it. How come I cannot do a British accent? I don't know. I can't do one either, so you can't even I'm, do I'm a, not attempting to. You can't even do a Stallone accent. 
Well, I, no one can nail down if exactly I can change, if you can change. Then can... we can all change. Yeah, so that's that was awful. Though. It is. <laughs> See? There you go. That's not much better. Well, no. That was like a Chewbacca doing the impersonation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Chewbacca calling out for Adrian. Okay, let's oh, get right. this wrapped up here. What's number right. one, Nick? Yours. Number one, uh, the, the fallback, Titanic. Yeah, good call. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't put Titanic because I honestly... Haven't talked to anyone in ten years that actually liked that movie. That was actually number one on Twitter and uh, for Facebook overrated? for overrated. It was uh, just, Titanic, just from the box office of yeah. the number yeah. one movie. I box mean, yeah, office they're, they're, I, I just can't take you know teenage girls' uh, opinions as saying it's it's worthwhile, and they're the ones that pu- pushed up the box office. I mean, multiple yeah. viewings. Uh, yeah, after a while, I th- I, th- I think it's come back down to earth on people's opinions of it because yeah, like most people, most people I know don't like it. I think it ended once James Cameron found the rose pendant with his submarine. Ah, so that's yeah, that, that's when ruined. Uh, uh, Jeff, what's your number one? Uh, my number one is Wedding Crashers. Oh, hated that movie. Hated it. Really? It not, I watched it with you. I thought you liked it. No. I, I, I found two or three laughs in it. Uh, I'm taking and, and the painting. That was for me. Uh, that, that was a gift. That, that, was, I think that was a the, gift. That was the funny line. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking the painting. That was a gift. I mean, I like, you know, uh, was it Ilsa Fisher's in it, so I like her. Um, I can't remember the name. Amy of the Adams? Other. Amy, yep. Yeah, can't remember the name of the other lady. <laughs> no, but uh, and it's like, I, yeah, no, I didn't like that movie Bradley at all. Cooper? Bradley Cooper was awful in that movie. Oh man! I mean, he was he he was playing the dick, and uh, his character was was it was a complete asshole. But it was such a two dimensional asshole. I beg to differ. I think uh, Vince Vaughn that was his finest acting no, ever. Well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> he well, really no. stretched. He well, really stretched. <laughs> I'm putting Wed- Wedding Crashers is also a representative of most Vince Vaughn movies. Yes. I'm not a big fan of most of like old school hated that one too. Oh my God. Well, they're, they're just not funny. You're just falling back on to the Will Ferrell. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, Will Ferrell. Yeah. He was in both of those too, but, but Vince Vaughn was probably the biggest reason I hate both of those movies. What happens if Vince Vaughn and Will Ferrell did a cross dressing movie? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. With dinosaurs. <laughs> you, you Direct, know directed by Michael Moore. <laughs> <laughs> and you know I would watch it. Co-directed by Chris Columbus. <laughs> With um, Robin Williams playing a robot. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably making the worst movie ever made, but I would watch it. And and I'll even uh, you know let best of the worst, I'll, I'll give them my opinions on that one. So So when they make that movie... Uh, I'll be first in line to I rip really it apart. like Wedding Crashers. Oh, I, no. Uh, it, it's, it's not funny. I beg to differ. <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> so, Jason, what's your number one? Uh, number one, Wizard of Oz. Okay. Silence. <laughs> I'm going really current. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I probably just haven't given Wizard of Oz a thought in, you know, 17 years. I think so. it helped that it was one of the first movies with black and white color and all that stuff. Yeah. And I understand what they were trying to do, but the story is weak. Uh, the songs are annoying. <laughs> um, I just cannot... I, I, I don't like it. I There's something about it. I get tired of hearing it every single... Oh, it's the 41st anniversary. It's the 75th anniversary. Yeah. I think 75 now. I th- yeah, something like that. I don't Man know. world. Uh <laughs> But it was like, oh, it's the 75th anniversary. Nobody fucking cares about these red slippers, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I I, I think everything, I, I just can't stand Wizard of Oz. I, I hate every time it's on. Um, the other one that I was thinking about, and it's kind of in the same book, Miracle on 34th Street. Oh, my goodness. You know, I never really watched it. Uh, I mean, I every just never time. had a desire to watch it. Well, one, I'm not a big fan of Christmas movies to begin with, so I tend not to watch them anyway. But uh, I, I'll agree, you know, Wizard of Oz, it just seems to be long, drawn out. Yes. And, and the whole story is, is could have been, you know, the, the entire adventure could have been wrapped up right away. Glinda, here's the shoes. If you tap them three times, you can go home. Yep. No oh, place no, like home. Instead, I want to send you out to go kill everybody I hate. Yes. Glinda is probably the most evil person ever depicted on film. Jeezel. She wow. takes advantage of a poor little girl, <laughs> sends her on a uh, murder spree. <laughs> Glinda is not with her a good little dog too, <laughs> and, and, and she does it in the guise of good. So she, what happened to Jeff this week? <laughs> Nick, he must have he, mu- he must have went downtown. It's all wicked this week. 
I, I saw Wicked a couple years ago. Okay. But, uh... Nick, you're going to have to come back. I'm glad you're here. I don't know. I would fear for my safety this week. <laughs> He's all on a knife. <laughs> That's a pen. Oh. <laughs> call, call security in the studio. I'm a little worried. I am the studio security. Oh, dear God. Oh. So I just have to run around him really fast. <laughs> or slow. <laughs> Nick, uh... Jeff's got little arms. He can't catch me. He's like a transverse rex. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I can't argue any of that. <laughs> okay. Uh, so number uh, that was our this number up. one. So yes. wrap it all up. Uh, bad idea. Number ninety two. Number ninety two. Taking a drink from a cult leader. Yeah, that, that's not a good idea. Oh, come in, have fun. We're all happy and flowers here. You want something to drink? Don't drink the Kool Aid, kids. Don't drink <laughs> the Kool Aid. Yeah. See what happens with that. And you know, not just even movie wise. In real life. Correct. <laughs> Correct. It's kind of like a couple of weeks ago we said, don't take a drink from a stranger. Yeah. That's good. That's a public service announcement. Public service <laughs> announcement, yeah. You, you might know this cult leader. He might not be a stranger, but he's a cult leader. There's nothing good in the Kool-Aid. That's correct. So, Nick, thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me. No problem. I'm glad you kind of were the buffer between me and Jeff. I was a little scared. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, hey, what can I say? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a scary person. That's right. Grr. Uh, <laughs> Roger says goodbye. Goodbye.